All right, good morning, everyone. I uh, do have to apologize for the last video if you happen to have seen it. I don't know what happened with the audio. For some reason, uh, the recording program I used picked up the microphone on the computer, not the headset that's on me. So, no, oh, well, neither here nor there. I got it figured out, and it looks like we're getting sound because I'm seeing the sound bar jump. So, always a good thing. So, uh, hopefully, recap everything so you guys get it. So here's where I'm at. I know we've been doing uh, these vlogs. have been a deeper look into the Sunday sermon. And that's great. But I feel like the world needs more. I've been on the radio, the news, Facebook. You see so many people who are full of knowledge probably know somebody who's just full of knowledge and that's where it is it's up here in the brain it doesn't go to the heart there's no application see and that's awesome that's great fantastic good for you but that's not what this is about it's not what Christianity is about Christianity is about that life change does to happen let me give you an example. I read this one guy on Facebook. He put this post up asking, the, he asked the question, why did Peter have to uh, state three times he loved Jesus and uh, John? And he goes, well, before we anyone uh, answers, you got to read my entire thing. And he had this long, I mean long thing going into the Greek and all this stuff, but this is what I'm talking about. Within there, he tried to go into the Greek and sound smart and, oh, yeah, you know, this is what this means. Well, no, you don't truly understand what's going on. You just sound smart. Let me give what he's saying. Uh, he goes, uh, Jesus says, do you love me? Greek word there is agape, a deep love. The, the word is translated, you know, deep love between a husband and wife, that kind of thing. Last time, Jesus says it. He says, Phileo, brotherly love. Peter, do you love me? He tried to go into, well, da, 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 you know, this is what this means and this wouldn't happen, da, da, da. Straight up. And he tried to go into... Well, they spoke Aramaic, not Greek, so I don't understand why the Greek's there. And uh, uh, uh. Okay, straight up, New Testament is written in Greek. Koinonia Greek, basic Greek. But there was a formality. You didn't repeat the same word so many times. Okay? <sighs> End the story. There's no reason it sounds smart. Agape and Phileo are there. Because John didn't want to keep repeating himself. That simple prove my point see we think we have all this knowledge and he went on this big old thing and there was nothing there and then I read some of the comments and they're like oh preach a brother and da 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 I've read these and it's all knowledge there's no life application side note little opinion about that verse that section think about it three times Jesus asked him do you love me how many times did Peter deny Jesus three times he was Peter was already forgiven but yet Peter Jesus had to get into Peter's head you are forgiven lead my church just putting that out there but here's my point we go to the knowledge. We put it all in the head and we forget about the wisdom. See, we think that because we have knowledge, we have wisdom. And we don't. You know, you look on Jeopardy. All these brilliant people with it. And they know all these facts. But that's knowledge. There's no wisdom. Wisdom is application. Don't believe me? Look at Solomon. Solomon is considered the wisest man in the world because he knew how to take knowledge and apply it. He 
could think rationally, take knowledge and make it work in real life. But here's what's awesome. God wants us to have wisdom. Think about it. Second Chronicles 1, chapter 1. Now in 1 Kings, we get an image of uh, Solomon being wise. And all it says is God gave Solomon great wisdom and understanding. We don't get what happens until Second Chronicles 1. Chapter 1. You see, the temple hadn't been built yet. Why it's called Solomon's Temple. So they had to go and sacrifice other places. Solomon goes out, goes to Gibeon with his new wife, and they make a thousand sacrifices. So it says, doesn't say of what. It just says he, Solomon made a thousand sacrifices. He's trying to live up to honoring God and worshiping God the right way, just as his father David did. So then, in a dream, after he does this, guy comes to Solomon and says, Ask anything of me and I will give it to you. And Solomon says, Look, you showed favor on my father, and he led with prosperity and all this. I am young. I know nothing about leading your people. Grant me the wisdom to lead your people. That is what I ask of you. And here we are. You know, we, God says, done. But, because you asked for wisdom, I'm going to give you everything else you didn't ask for. Money, fame, all that. See, God values wisdom. That's why there's the book of Proverbs in there about wisdom. The first nine chapters talk about a comparison between two characters. Wisdom and folly. Don't believe me? Go read it. See, too many Christians are content gaining knowledge on Sundays and going out the door. See, wisdom invokes life change. Wisdom invokes moving forward. Wisdom means you actually have to take that knowledge, think about it, and use it. Solomon was the wisest man. History books show us the, not just the Bible. So this is what I'm proposing. After reading all this and seeing this. We do a Christian boot camp. And I'm not talking about that negative connotation. Oh, you're in trouble with this. Well, we're all in trouble. I hate to say it. We face temptation and Satan every day. But here is where rubber meets the road. See, when I was in basic training in the Army, we had to start at the beginning. We had to start with the basics. Rifleman, rifling, marching, taking orders, physical fitness, all this stuff. We had to be able to... Understand the basics and make it second nature before we can move on. And I think so many people, uh, Peter says, you know, you must crave the spiritual milk. Paul says, you know, you once had milk and now you get meat. Well, how many Christians truly had the milk? They jump right into the meat and they forget the basics. And then we become hypocrites because we know the knowledge. But we don't know the wisdom. We'll recite scripture left and right. Well, Bible says this. You know, that's the reason why the world hates Christians. It isn't because of our religion. It's because we recite facts instead of making the life change. If Christianity is part of who we are, okay, guess what? People are going to accept you because that's what they want. They don't want some religion. There's plenty of those. What they want is something different. And that's what God offers. That's what Christ did for us. He did something different. Think about it. 
every religion besides Christianity is about going and doing works and doing everything you can to reach heaven. Christianity says, no, 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 no. That, that gap has already been bridged because of what God did for us. It's different. Because it invokes a life change. Look at the apostles. We have fishermen, tax collectors, zealots. We had all kinds of professions. And yet, look at the change. Acts shows us this when uh, Peter and John, after healing a man at the gate, go before the religious leaders. They speak with authority and they're the religious leaders can see that there's this life change. But one of the guys says, don't punish them. These are nothing but fishermen. You know, if this is truly from God and their lives have been changed, there's nothing we can do. I think that speaks volumes for us. If we take this knowledge that we're going to go through on the, in this Christian boot camp and we make it real we make it life-changing we instead of making that knowledge we make it wisdom we take it from the brain to the heart that is where it will change people will see a difference so here's what this is going to entail every wednesday me getting on here and we're going to break things down we're going to start with the bible i mean basics of the bible where did it come from what it consists of that kind of stuff Every week I'm going to give you scripture to read. I'm going to give you a, a verse to memorize. You're on the honor system. Because I'm doing a vlog. So if you truly want to go through this, you have to be willing to do it. And like I said, you're on the honor system. It's between you and God. Because that's where it sits. Christianity is about you and God making a life change. Holy Spirit empowering you to make that change. Letting the world see, hence baptism. Proclamation to the world, you accept the Christ as your Savior. Buried in His resurrection, you go into the water. Raised in His likeness, you are a new creature. You are a new creation, as Paul puts it. Let the life change happen. So I invite you, join me on this. I don't think Amos will be the same. I look forward to seeing you all on Sunday. We're going to talk about the servanthood of Christ and how that plays out. We're still looking at Jesus being that radical difference. So I look forward to seeing you all on Sunday. May God bless you the rest of this week.